one thing I think I've noticed recently, but I might be hallucinating this, is this uh, is what I see is a kind of tendency to, um, well, to kind of evoke new versions of God as groundings for morality. I suppose I'm prompted to think of this by um, a recent video I, uh, exchange I had with a user called Don Quixote de Cor. And she was talking about pantheism, and I was not talking about pantheism. And the kind of conclusions he seemed to be drawing, I might be inferring beyond the deity, but this is certainly what it seemed like, is that, um, you know, without some kind of sense of either pantheistic sense or some sense of, uh, of identification with the biosphere, then you couldn't be a moral person. That was, they didn't say it in quite those terms, but that seemed to be the implication. You know, that the world's ills, and individual ills, in fact, were the uh, the result of a, a kind of carelessness. Come on. Come on. So there's a dog just sniffing around with you. Jeffy! Guy's got his, his muzzle on, so he can't do any harm. No! Anyway, yeah, what was I talking about? Yeah, yeah, pantheism. This is really... Um, yeah, I have a big problem with that, really. What it reminds me of is that whole idea that you find in William Lane Craig, and you find in lots and lots of Christian texts, particularly, uh, and you find a lot on, uh, amongst fundamentalist Christians here on YouTube, that without God, it's impossible to be good. Without God, it's impossible to be good. And I know there's a lot of atheist refutations of that and counters to that. In fact, there's a book called Good Without God, um, which contains a lot of the arguments around it. I haven't read it yet, but I've read about it concerns lots of the arguments about that uh, from a kind of humanist perspective. But it does seem to be being re you know, replaced in some people's minds with a kind of good without Gaia, you know, how is it possible to be good without Gaia kind of philosophy? You know, that unless, as I say, we're um, slightly reverential towards the biosphere, we couldn't possibly be good human beings. Yeah, th I think it's implied in uh, religious naturalism, you know, in books like Ursula Good Enough's, um, what's it called, Sacred Depths of Nature, which I really like, you know, and I've got a lot of respect for in the sense that, you know, she's she's talking scientifically, but a lot of the the attitude one is supposed to have, or which is encouraged in that, is this attitude of reverence and worship and awe, those kind of things. And I don't really like having my feelings constrained and, and uh, legislated in that way, you know, that unless I'm feeling slightly religious, slightly sacred about the way the world is, then I couldn't possibly be a good person within it, which I think is lurking in there. And I think we even find it in, um, well, heavily implied at least, in some scientific writing. You know, when, um, what's he called, Carl Sagan says, you know, we are the universe becoming conscious of itself. You know, it's a kind of mantra that's endlessly reframed in kind of new agey circles. The universe becoming conscious of itself. It's, a, it is, it is, it's pantheism light, isn't it? It's panpsychism. The idea that we are, we are, you know, that there is, that the universe is a mind and we are its organs of sight or we are, or its organs of self, of self-realization. It, again, it's, it's a kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's spinozistic or something like that, but it's still, uh, it still has that overtone to it, I think. And as soon as you start doing that, it seems to me, then it carries a lot of moral baggage with it. You know. And the idea that a person could not agree with that, or not buy into that, what I see as a mythology, uh, you know, it d does seem to leave people, leave people open to moral censure. You know what I mean? I feel as if I have been morally censured by not aligning myself with pantheism, or panpsychism, or the universe becoming conscious of itself. Uh, not, you know, not greatly, I'm certainly not offended, but that's certainly the, uh, the tone of some of the responses that I've had. It's a bit odd, really, actually. You know, it's like, you know, the, our moral comp does our moral compass really need a great big magnet somewhere out in space in order to point in the right direction? You know, whether you call that magnet God, or whether you call it the biosphere, or whether you call it the universe, or whether you call it pantheism or panpsychism, 
you know, whatever you call it. I mean, do you really, do we really need great big magnets in the sky in order to orient our moral compasses? I Me mean, personally, I don't. You know, because I don't believe those things, but I don't consider myself a bad person. And it's not up to me to explain that, really. If I was to explain it, I would explain it in terms of much more local magnets. You know what I mean? I'm a, a human being with human values, appropriate to that. And act accordingly. You know, I don't, I don't want or need a great big magnet in the sky. Yeah. Don't think that makes any sense, really, does it? There's still questions around it, of course. But I do think that whole idea that if you're not on board with the pagan pantheism thing, or you're not on board with the kind of David Chalmers universe panpsychist Fechner thing, then uh, you are necessarily a moral nihilist or a moral relativist. No, it's bullshit. No, it's bullshit. Be nice to each other. That's all you do. Just be nice to each other. That's it. You know, because other people are little moral magnets, just like yourself. You know what I mean? Point yourself accordingly. That's it.